Say a word for my wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that shit is, yeah, this shit that. is hit my heart. What? This is not. Who the fuck bought this? Mm -hmm. You. Okay. We got to see you been letting the babysit up there. I mean, it's bad, but it ain't bad. Like, it actually got like a. Apple like undertone? It's, See, it's that's what I don't bad. like. It's like a, oh, it's like a pear undertone or some shit. Well, I, I was thinking There's something like I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> I, what's going on, y'all? Thank y'all for tuning back in uh, to the More Than Love podcast. I'm Fine Wine. I got a special guest with me today. This is Ace of Clubs. Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell the people who you are and what you actually do? Y'all, what's up? It is your boy, Zach Hinton, Ace of Clubs. You might have seen me hosting all the events, all the parties, all the Greek events in Kansas City. I've been to St. Louis a couple of times. And I'm definitely making my way in Atlanta, so um, man, it's just been a blessing. Okay, so how'd you get your start? Cause I, I mean, I've seen you definitely in the college scene. You was hosting a lot, yeah. And then I think the St. Louis, uh, the Connect Kansas City St. Louis connections, kind of where it started giving you more exposure. Yeah. So how did that, you know? How did that all come about? You know, I've always been like just super like loud and extra for no reason. Like, okay. and my thing is, if people gonna call me extra, let me get paid for it. I'm just one of them people where I just make sure that if they talking about it, then let's be about it. So people be like, oh, you loud or you extra, you do the fool. Well, yeah, the difference to separate me from anybody else is that I get paid to do that. So I just, I wanted to make it a personality. I just wanted to be that person that be on a microphone, bow, 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 turn up and just give them the work. experience. It'll work. It do. It's very strategic. But um, I started out early on, like hosting like little talent shows and step shows and stuff. And then from there, it just kind of elevated. I remember one of the... One of the first events I got was from uh, our hometown, Deltas. They let okay. me do like the uh, cafe um, event, they poetry slam or whatever. And then from there, I just stayed consistent. Yeah. And then uh, I, I look back on my time span. I've been hosting since like 2009. So it's been a minute. But I didn't have the opportunity to host and open up for Jeezy, open up for Drizzy. Mm -hmm. um, not Drizzy, Drizzy. Same thing, almost. Drizzy, like Actually, it. she got mad at me because I said, hey, Drizzy. And she was like, it's not Drizzy, it's Drizzy. And I was like, whatever accent come out, or whatever yeah, I say is what I'm saying. should be all right. So y'all want to backtrack on something you already said when you said consistency. Yeah. You know, so what does that, what does the consistency look like? Because we always say it takes hard work and dedication. But to somebody that, you know, doesn't know much or how the business works, they might think, you know, consistency may, okay, I'm here every Thursday, but I might not yeah. talk to nobody else or follow up on anything that, or connections I've developed. So, I don't know. I feel like for me, consistent is a whole different ballpark because you can be determined. You can like, a rapper can go to the studio spending buku money every single day. And I don't mean the hit is going to come. You That's just right. wasting money. Like, That's are right. you going to put out, are you going to be consistent enough to make sure that you're putting out the music that you pushing? Or are you just going to be dumb enough to keep going to the studio and paying for, you know, a studio time. time? So I consistency for me just meant being intentional about my moves and making sure that they were strategic moves that will elevate my platform. And so I knew that um, being a part of Kansas City Greek Picnic or being a part of the UMKC um, student um, council, whatever the case, I knew all those were intentional steps for me to have a greater platform. I knew that if I was seen as this host, then when Kevin Hart came to UMKC and I was the special event coordinator, I would have access to be able to talk to him. I would have access to be able to talk to you know, just different celebrities that I came in contact with. And um, I was able to build a pretty decent resume enough to become Kenya Moore's assistant yeah. on The Real Housewives. Come on now. I did that. That um, was a fact. A I remember bit. that. Yep. That was cool. Did you work like, for Google as well? I did. Yeah. I did. So, um, Kansas City has a, a Google Fiber branch, which is like the internet or whatever, but just staying consistent. I'm one of the people where if it's not an immediate door to uh, where I need to go, then what's the byproduct? Or how can I, you know, step through an alleyway to get uh, to the door? How can I, you know, find a connection that's getting me closer to the door? And I just yeah. take full advantage of it. And so talking about your connections and execution, how did you decide this is how I want to do it? I think when, when you get on stage and... A crowd to tell you your truth or not. And for me, when I'm on stage and the crowd is rocking with me, it'll be people at the end of whatever I'm doing. Like, hey, bro, you had the mug jumping. Or females like, dang, you really had us. Lit. <laughs> and I, it just, it gives you a, a different, bow, bow, yeah, yeah, it yeah, gets you yeah. so I'm hype. Really, yeah. And I think what, what really got me excited is uh, seeing other hosts come mm -hmm. up and they use and bow, bow. Or... Mm -hmm. 
females pre gaming and when they when they best friend is twerking, she like bow bow and they tag me. It's just like I created a movement yeah. and that movement is on the highway because I didn't hear some people in St. Louis say bow bow or turn or whatever the case yeah. may be. And I'm not claiming that I own the uh Phrase. Just somebody, your help to push the movement. There we go. Phrase. I yeah. think I think for me, I just I elevated it. Um, yeah. Actually, it's funny because I actually got that bow 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 from um, Waka Flocka. You know that song? Okay. It's like cry. Uh, how I go? Like uh, I mean, all that, that, that bow 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 bow. bow, bow, bow. Can okay, we might get copyright. And it, yeah, but <laughs> what it did was it got me hyped. Yeah. And so when I got hyped, I'm like bow. I got on the microphone, I'm like, I'm going to try this. Mm -hmm. So at the time, me and Reggie, DJ Asylum, we do all of our events together. I was just like, bro, this is what I want to do. I want to elevate that. Every time I play that song, mm -hmm. I want I want to bow, bow, bow. And then from there, dun, um, dun, the boom, dun, da, 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 da. So I was yeah, just trying yeah. to figure out any song that had either that that phrase or that sort of feel and I would thought about exactly but, yeah. so then when uh, I would I would make I would come out to Holly Berry I would look for the female trying to you know hey, okay I see you Holly Berry make right. a joke like girl you look right. like Tyler Perry and like the crowd start wild <laughs> and, and just for me it's like I know that I'm funny I know I got it so I just I just wanted to make sure that people had a good time when they are stepping away yeah and for me to go a little deeper like for me I feel like um I'm answering my truth. When I'm on stage, the people that's uh, in the crowd, they're not dealing with that domestic violence. They're not dealing with the grief. They're not dealing with uh, not having money. They there at that moment to laugh and have a good time. Right. They either sacrificed that $30, $40, $50 and they came or they was excited to come. But at the, uh, the two hour span, they was there to see me and whatever else mm -hmm. we got going on. So I don't take it lightly. I actually get very frustrated when all these people want to become host out of nowhere or they get a nice little following and think they got it. And it's like, I craft my stuff. So yeah. um, for me, it's just like, I, I put it all, I, I stress about it. I get nervous before I get on stage. And that just lets me know that it's a passion. It ain't just like a little a little side thing that I do yeah. on the side. So what had, what would you say the experience been like? You know, because you started out in KC, yeah. Then we you did some things in St. Louis, and then you traveled else, you know, other places around the world. But now you're in Atlanta. Yeah. So what had the experience been like getting here? You know, um, actually, I gotta shout out my girlfriend. Uh, for shout the, her out. Uh, shout out Aaron. Uh, she actually <laughs> she over there. But I gotta shout her out because. Every time people ask me, like, um, how did I get the, the job, I always let her know, like, it, it was because of her. She yeah. surprised me with tickets to um, B. Simone's comedy show. And I was just a huge fan of B. Simone. And more importantly, I'm just a huge fan of anybody that, that looks like us doing something big. Mm -hmm. So when she surprised me uh, with tickets, um, naturally, I'm like, dang, like, I, I, I like that. I know that. I aspire to have, you know, an opportunity like that in the future. And when I got something in my mind and I want to accomplish it, it's like the clear path is I'm going to make that path regardless if I see it right there or not. I'm going to make that path happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of them people where if I if I like what you got going, I want to know who's the team behind you that's making you flourish because I'm a firm believer that nobody's just out here doing it on their own. Beyonce ain't just making it happen on her own. I know y'all want to believe that, but she not. Did he not making it on his own? He has a team of people. And regardless if you shout him out or not, there's a team behind him. So I just did my due diligence. I got on B. Simone's page. I mm -hmm. scrolled down, figured out who she shouted out. I saw that she shouted out her manager. I followed her manager. Um, and the rest was just history. I literally got on live, her live one day, and she was talking about how she needed a assistant. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, rewind back to me telling you I was Kenya Moore's assistant. I was just overly confident. I knew I had the talent. I, I'm a hard-ass worker, yeah. like, regardless. Um, and so with that... I just, I screenshot my resume, I put it in her DM, I put my phone number in her DM, I was texting, I was letting her know, like, this is, I'm, I'm the person. Yeah. Um, and I just stayed consistent. So that's where that consistency came in. Um, every time she got on live, I got on live. And my alerts wasn't, my notifications weren't known. I just, it was just like a, a God-led thing for me. It's like every time I would get on um, Instagram, she would be on yeah. Instagram. And I just knew, I'm like, okay. Let me really tap in, and the day I tapped in, it was it was like history. Um, she invited me to one of her virtual classes. I worked for Google Fiber, so my internet was top shape. Yeah. Her internet was trash when we was in the uh, in that class that she invited me on. And uh, when her internet was messing up, I just acted as her assistant. She got kicked out, and I'm like, hey, y'all, let's refer back to the notes. I want y'all to know, like, da 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 how mm -hmm. y'all feel about this. So when she got back in, I felt like she, she probably didn't see it. But in my mind, I know she saw that them uh, people that were in it were still flowing with the conversation yeah. as opposed to being mad or whatever. And I, I just think it spoke a lot about how I was able to just jump into the opportunity. So 
if that's any, what entrepreneurs do they find the niche there you go right any opportunity you just got to jump into it and act like you already got the title and from there i was easily able to kind of talk to her and make some stuff happen i lied and said that i was coming to atlanta mm -hmm. uh on the phone call i didn't really lie because i was going to come i just wasn't going to go as fast yeah. as as i told as i mentioned so I got off the phone, called my frat brother, uh, I'm a noob, if y'all didn't know, y'all should know, Ace of noob. Clubs, K-L-U-B-Z, but, um, <laughs> but I called my frat brother, I'm like, hey bro, I need a ticket to Atlanta. Yeah. I got out there, it just so happened they were filming the B. Simone, uh, looking for a boyfriend uh, show, mm -hmm. helped out with that, and the rest was history. I literally went back home, me and my girlfriend had our going away party, we got on the road and we was there, January 23rd, yeah, so, um, and this is a year later, and I done been to like... 13 countries, so. Right. So, so you talking about um, you and you grew up basically up and left, right? Oh, we on it. <laughs> yeah, we rolled it, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Basically up and left. So, uh, the, you know, and so the, my next question is like the cost and sacrifice that it takes because most people think, you know, you can think of a dream, think of an idea, but now, okay, it comes with work. Yeah. And so some work you have to really sacrifice, so it might not, you might stop going out, you might stop hanging out here, yeah. you might start, you know, not texting back to certain conversations because you have to put those energy elsewhere to, for your brand or for you, sure. you know, to do whatever. So what did it look, actually look like for you? You know, my world was flipped upside down. At a time where I was eager to leave was the same time that my brother was murdered. Like, my brother was killed um, in 2017, the day after my birthday. And how crazy that was is uh, I was having this huge mansion party. You know, I'm popular. People kind of know my name, but I didn't know how many people was going to come out. I was just super determined. And, um, Long story short, um, I'm cleaning the, uh, that Airbnb, this big old mansion. Uh, while I'm cleaning the, uh, the mansion, owner was like, hey, man, I wasn't able to get, uh, you know, my maids to come and clean. Actually, let me reverse it because I'm lying to y'all. Before I was cleaning, uh, the mansion guy was like, hey, man, I'm not unable to get my uh, maids to kind of clean up. But if you and your friends clean up, y'all can have the uh, house not just for that day, but a whole weekend. So in my mind, I feel like that was a gift that my brother gave me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that he... Uh, was past then, but you know, me and my friends, we cleaning, we cleaning, then I get a call, my auntie basically told me uh, they killed my brother, or somebody killed my brother. I'm rushing down the uh, highway trying to get to my mom, and you never want to hear that scream like that. Like, yo, mama, to scream like that, it was just a, oh, oh, I'm stuttering, like trying to yeah. talk, but it's just like an eye opener for me. So that happened, um, and then you know, you know, the family come, they console you. I'm kind of speeding up the story because I want y'all to get the, the bigger picture. But family come, and then my mom was like, it's, it's your birthday, I want you to go celebrate. And in fact, go celebrate your brother's life. So I was like, I actually canceled it, sort of. My friends was like helping me cancel it. Yeah. And then they was like, no, nah, let's, like, let's just do it, let's do it. So I was like, um, I was determined to like just go and have a good time uh, to remember my brother. And uh, I just remember going in the doors of the mansion, and it's like a whole bunch of people. Now, keep in mind, they don't know that my brother passed away. They just there for me. Yeah. So um, I'm like drinking away, like just trying to drink, trying to numb the pain. I'm drinking whatever I can find. And it's none so crazy. we drinking at night. Yeah, none of that, <laughs> none of that at all. But I'm drinking whatever I can find. I, uh, you know, wiping tears, just trying to yeah. present that Zach that everybody know. And um, I just remember having fun, like kicking it. And I was like, hey, turn on the music, turn on the music. I was like, I know a lot of y'all came to celebrate the success of my life, but which I may or may not know is that my brother passed away today, so we need to celebrate his life. And what happened, and I'm, I'm real, I don't, I don't want to say I'm like super spiritual, but like something happened in that moment that like changed my life. Like, y'all, I promise, look at me, I promise y'all this happened. Uh, as soon as I said, like, hey, y'all, la, 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 la this light like it was like everybody snapchat lights just like came on and everything got white and my brother was standing in front of me and when yeah. i hugged him like i could feel the warmth of like like his body and i could feel like his clothes and he was like hey bro i made it to heaven i made it like god got me and like when he said it i was just like okay like okay and then he whispered in my ear and he said uh he left my niece and my nephew uh and his girlfriend my uh, nephew was a newborn my niece was probably like two years old mm -hmm. And he uh, whispered in my ear, and I promise y'all, he said, just show them the love that you know I would have gave them. And when that happened, I like came back to reality. I looked at everybody. I ran at the top of the mansion. And I just cried out of nowhere. Fast forward that same year, December 22nd, the same people who killed my brother killed the girlfriend. So my niece and nephew are without their mama or their daddy. And for me, um, even three years later, it's like my grind is um, it stemmed from grief. You know, mm -hmm. like I told myself, like, hey, Zach, you got to be in a position and it's so crazy because even a week after my brother passed away i was speaking on a panel of 100 plus 200 300 plus people at the um 
what is that conference? It's like just a black collegiate conference that happened all the time. And you wanted uh, to black man? No, it was a, sort of like that, but it wasn't that one uh, per se. It's like one of, whatever. Being my sister. Yeah, I was just speaking okay. on the panels and you, people was just like texting me who knew me like, man, how are you so resilient? Like, how are you so strong? Like, how are you able to do that? I would, And I think because I had that uh, moment with my brother, it just made me realize like, that that's what the bigger picture is about. It's about having something so strong in you that nobody can tell you no, nobody can talk about you, nobody can say nothing that's gonna deter you from your dreams and you just gotta go with it. I smile every day because I know that I have an opportunity that my brother never gets. So I'm not too phased about what people think, what people say, what they rumor about, what they're upset about. I really just live my life to the fullest and I gotta tat it in case I forget. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's just how it is. Okay. Um so just you know some of the, your backstory and some of the things that you told us already what is your life like now you know through the beginning some of the struggles yeah. then you've seen some heights and now you at where you're at like what, what what would you say your life is like now it's really crazy because i'm in this transitional period where it's like god is really showing me what what i can do um sort of not on my own but what i can do just in my own head like for me, I made the decision, my girlfriend made the decision with me to move to Atlanta and I have no real strings attached to anybody else's opinion than the person I care to bring along. So I'm not too concerned if my mama didn't agree with it, not too concerned if my auntie, not too concerned if friends didn't agree. It's like I'm not attached to none of that and everything that people say is just an opinion. Like luckily I have a huge support system, my, aunt, my auntie loves it, my mama loves it, everybody's supportive. Um, but for me, it was just like now I see just the total opposite in how I move. Like um, this past year, I was able to travel to 13 or 11 different countries. And that's countries like out of out of town. That ain't like, you, you know, know I'll drop the link right here of his uh, Instagram. So you go check out his page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. I literally have taken pictures with giraffes and uh, tigers and zebras water. and no and over water. And you know, that's crazy because uh, where we from, a lot of people never been to the beach. That's right. You know, a That's lot of right. people have never even been to multiple same, same. states yeah. or or even traveled their own state. And, you know, so it's a blessing because one of the things I did say December of uh, 2018 going into 2019, I said I prayed with my passport. That's why I'm so excited that I'm around people like B. Simone and Skittles who talk about manifesting the life that you want to live. Mm -hmm. Because before I got the job, I literally prayed with my passport. And I, I felt stupid doing it. I feel like when you feel stupid doing something, it always work, right? Mm -hmm. Like, And so I felt super stupid because I felt like it was my last little prayer that I was about to give God. And I felt like I was about to give up. And I was like, I'm just about to pray this prayer. Yeah. Put my passport in my hand. I was like, God, I just asked that you show me the world because my brother was unable to. I asked that you just allow me to see different culture, different ethnicity cities and you just show me the highest of the highs and just be able to put me in a place where I'm able to just understand what love looks like on a universal language and that's what I said and for me to get that job in January and my first trip was to DR March and then from there just mm -hmm. been to Africa Bali Tokyo China I just, I just been everywhere yeah, and I don't yeah. and I don't boast about it like every, all my friends is like hey bro you need to do it and and for me it's just like when when God has already shown you where he about to take you it's like this stuff is just icing on the cake because I know how big it is. He told me, like, I'm going to be speaking to the masses. And when he said that, it's like, of course, the masses mean I'm going to have to go to Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go to China. I'm going to have to go here. So when, when when God makes that promise to you and you know that there's something that you want to manifest, it's like, I'm grateful for these opportunities, but I'm ready to see it unfold on a level where it's just, like, super big and super bold. Like, so. I mean, one of my favorite scriptures, just talking about what you're doing yeah. right now, is being faithful to a few. He'll okay. make real rules over many. I need to send me that. I got you. Okay, cool. I got you. That's one thing, you know, I definitely live by because we got to take care of our own. And, and it starts with yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, I teach my my classes. is basically self-love, time management, mm -hmm. and networking. That's good. Because without any of those, especially self-love, your confidence, you're not able to do the things and fulfill your desires. So you're not touching, your, you're not fulfilling yourself and you're not doing anything for the people you serve. I had and to so, learn that early on. Man, it's a hard thing because you learn how to balance. Yeah. And once you start taking jumps and risks on your own, you learn, you get to learn yourself. And all those things that you, you know, grew up believing, now the things like that, they start getting tested because it's just like, is this true or is this reality? And yeah. I like living in reality for the most part. So my next question is, what do you think wasn't needed? Because we do a lot of things. Like I can say like, okay, I thought I had to be outside networking and all that. But in reality, I'm just 
yeah. doing nothing outside, just being seen. Which is okay, which is imperative in some parts, but you don't have to do that all the time. Like, it's a certain time you, it's time to be, you know, pull it back in. I think for me, what wasn't needed was the, um, the self inflicted, um, hate I gave myself. Mm. You know, a lot, like behind closed doors, that's the hardest moments of your life because nobody's able to kind of talk you through that. And yeah. I felt like um, people see the Zach that's smiling, but they don't see the Zach that's like overly worried or so depressed or trying to figure out why why this person hate me or this or why this rumor happened. And it's just like, I had to realize like people gonna rock with you regardless. And that's just what where my heart is. I'm learning that. I can't say that I'm all the way there. And if somebody tell you that uh, they don't care what people think, they lying. They are. I feel like we wake up every day to dress a certain way. And it, it, yeah, it's for us. We get that part. But I think society has conditioned us to feel like we have to do it for the attention, do it for the likes, do it for that. And don't get me wrong, like, I'm not saying none of that is bad, but I think for me, I had to get in my, my, my own mind because it it wasn't that I cared too much about what everybody else was saying. It's about what what I was saying that hurt me the most. I was giving myself, you know, um, the hard conversations or not real, or, or allowing my success to be minimized. Like, I would tell myself, Zach, but that ain't good enough. Mm-hmm. Or Zach, you need to work a little harder. Yeah, you didn't. and it's like Zach, no, you need to celebrate the small success. And so now I just kind of, yeah. even if I like buy myself a meal or something, or I give myself that time to just really like be thankful for where I'm at, I had to do it because there'll be times where where you want to be, you want to get there so quick, or you want to get there, you know, you want to get there that you bypass the smaller moments. So for me, I just had to tell myself that self infliction or that self sort of hate that we give ourselves and everybody do it it's like you got to be able to minimize that voice because sometimes that'll be the the voice that stop you from doing a lot Every, of things a lot of things and which makes you lazy yeah it's, and those things can cripple you yeah and so those and which crippling brings excuses sure. so my life and i'm glad we're transitioning to this because this is the biggest thing i think just trying to spread any type of news that you got going on. how big do you think or how important do you think it is to expand your brand or what does that look like it's so important to expand a brand, but I'm going to be honest. Like, for me, I'm scared to expand it mm-hmm. right now. Um, you know, you when you work with certain people, and don't get me wrong. Like, the people I work with, they're, they're cognizant of what I want to do. We talk about what it is. They know that I want to host, but I just feel like naturally I don't want to be seen as a person who um, has a, a hidden agenda. Mm-hmm. And I have to remind myself that that agenda was happening way before I stepped in the platform that I was at. And yeah. I, I'm so thankful that I have people in my circle who remind me of, of who I used to be because sometimes I get on this ride or this roller coaster and I start forgetting it and I, I start playing my role as opposed to remembering um, what God intended to happen, you know? And yeah. so I, I, your brand is important and it's, 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 how, it's how I speak, it's how I introduce myself, it's how confident I am, it's all of that. But like, and I think I, like getting on this podcast is dope because it's reminding me that you still have a mission to uphold. And it's never get complacent, never get content. My boss says it all the time. So for her to say that obviously means that it, it makes some sort of sense. But um, if any advice I can give somebody is um, just don't be a slave to... Don't just be a slave to the current situation. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, when I was working at uh, Google, and Google's good, I'm not downing that or saying that it's not for me, but I just felt like I would eat, breathe, sleep Google. Mm-hmm. And at some point, you just got to be able to understand who you are. Now, luckily, yeah. I do have, you know, a job where they say, okay, like, well, what is it that you want to do or, or how you want to do it? And the conversation might not happen as frequent but for the conversation to happen at your job is enough for me because then that means that they care enough about the aftermath Mm -hmm. um my boss has always uh, mentioned like people aren't just going to stay an assistant like we're going to elevate this we're going to make this bigger than what it is and that's what keep me going a a job who cares to like help you with the elevation part and so i just think that you just gotta understand you know what it is and what it ain't like you know what i mean that's facts that's all That's all true. Because once you know your situation, anything is possible. And uh, so let me add this, because I know y'all going to be like, well, you done talked about your whole job. What is it that you do? Talk to you. Tell um, what you do. I'm actually an assistant. I'm a personal assistant for um, for Miss Skittles, who, is, who manages 
B. Simone. She manages different um, clients with her ISIN agency. Um, I, I don't want to say manages, she brands them. Uh, she only manages B. Simone. She brands the different clients with her agency. She has multiple businesses. Um, and y'all can follow her page at Miss Skittles, M Z S K I T T L E Z, um, to kind of know what she does. But basically, I am her, her assistant. And so, with that, because B. B Simone is um, her client, I have the ability to kind of travel with B. Simone too. So. Okay, so we're about to take a quick break, and yep. then we're going to go into the last two uh, segments that we have. Um, and then, okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do the Spitfire round. Okay, cool. A couple questions. Um, first thing that pops at your head, then we go with. All right, you ready? Yep. Is there anybody you would like to work with or meet? Um, anybody I want to work with or meet? Uh, yes. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> Let me think. You said spit fire, so you got me feeling like I gotta hurry up and say something. I mean, kind of a it's a lot, it's a lot of questions. No, okay, no, that's good. Okay, so anybody that I would want to work with or meet, um, I think just right now, um, I would want to work with. Um, if you could hype anybody up, oh, that's that say like, oh, I mean, if I'm hosting, that, hosting wise, yeah. if I could hype anybody. Uh, maybe like Meg the Stallion right now. That might be it. I, because I just feel like it's a wave, and naturally my bow bow bows yeah. will like do that. And then she gonna do the ride. Yeah, all that. Oh, you yeah. know. And I feel like the the crowd response to her dancing, mm -hmm. and then the bow, it just add that. You know you, what I mean? You might have to set that up. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk to my I, agent. Yeah, yeah, make it happen. I feel I'll like talk to my agent. Cool. If you were gonna be in a movie, what type of movie would you be in? You, you know, because I think that I'm super goofy, I would want to do the opposite. I, just for me, I just want to be able to play like a serious role where like really like is like real gut written like one of them like power like a like a drama or a crime. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could be ghosting or like that. I could probably be one of the little knucklehead dudes. Okay. And like, no, I don't know. I, I, acting is something that I do yeah. want to do. So like when I settle down and like when I'm in my zone, like mm -hmm. that is something I want to do. Uh, I always wanted to do that. Um, I like yeah. being hitched. Yeah, you want to be what? I would probably like to be a hitch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think like for me, I would want to like be Will Smith, Little Brother. Or something. There you go. Yeah. I would want to do like a sitcom. Like if, if I could okay. do like I'm a with sitcom, that. I'm with then, that. then it could be comedy because I'll be cool. Okay, what sitcom would you be in though? Like that's already been made. Like Martin or something like that. I would have been in Jamie Fox. Oh, Jamie Fox. All day. Good. All day. And then if they needed like Blackish, I would do like one of them. I ain't seen it. My girlfriend watched that stuff yeah. like mixes up. But I, I watch like, Blackish and growing it sometimes when I have time. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. that. Like for sure. movies like that where it's like a black little family and stuff. I could easily be like one of the little, you know. I could because I don't have any facial hair. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> we don't. So y'all, whenever y'all looking at hey, this, we need give us the rose, you know. Right. And actually, high school music, Mama. <laughs> Ricky, good. see, I'm with it. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> so what's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up in the morning? I get on my phone and that's so bad. Uh, me too. Be some was talking about something that yep. uh, her last well, the two it was two videos ago she was talking about that trying to change up her. Yeah, her daily routine. Yeah. I'm trying to change it, but I think for me, I just feel like I'm missing something. It, I look at numbers. Yep. Like you like those type of things, like you go to sleep, looking at numbers, wake up looking at numbers, and I'm trying to not look at analytics, but analytics really matter in the society. So you just gotta make it make sense. So would you say hot or cold? Hot. Okay. Pie or emos? Or what or would Kansas they have their own pizza situation, right? I'm not saying no emos. I'm not saying emos either. I'm from Decatur. So uh, but I ain't saying pies. Our price we just had the conversation about Domino's uh Pizza? No, Domino's or Papa John's. And Papa John's just, is my favorite. You know, I now my uh, I went to Florida a couple months ago, and I went to CC's Pizza, and they had this spinach. That's Alfredo. Oh my, that's my favorite. And then when you go, you can also get the cinnamon roll. Yes. All I eat is that spinach. That mug is. I, I had at least ten slices. That's all I, since I've been back. That's all I eat. Man. I might put a little chicken on it, but that's it. No, yeah, I already Spinach know. With the Alfredo sauce. Yeah, I always, all my pieces be Alfredo. That's uh, it's over with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's your favorite pair of shoes of all time? I like Balenciagas. Okay. I like Balenciagas. The socks? Like. Uh, I got the socks, but I like like the bulky boys. I don't know. It just I don't know. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. I got yeah. one now. So. I think it's, you know it matters in what com you know what city and community you in. 
because it makes more sense. Yeah, and I wear Vans a lot. That's so cool. I wear a lot of Vans. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm What size are you wearing Vans? 11. 11. All right. We're putting that down. And are we just living, boys? The only way. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> um, what is your favorite drink? Like alcohol wise? Let's go alcohol. Let's go, you know, juice. Juice? I just like a nice little, like, like lemonade. Like, if it's like a. I wish I could drink that. Oh yeah, you can't have nothing citrusy, but I like uh, you know strawberry lemonades, peach lemonades, kiwi lemonades, your lemonade, my lemonade, Beyonce lemonade. I just like lemonades. So, <laughs> um, and then uh, alcohol wise, I really like just whiskey. Like I just pair whiskey with a lot of stuff. I, if I would have done, I would have got one. I mean, yeah, or or like what type of whiskey? You jacket like Jack Daniels situation, or like a Johnny mm -hmm. Walker? See, I ain't too. It can be whatever. I'm oh, okay. Gonna... I'm a Johnny Walker type of guy. I don't ever drink whatever we got. I drink Johnny Walker. Nah. Okay. Yeah, it's like a Scotch whiskey. I just think my fraternity got me on that stuff. That's all it is. Or, or, the, or, you know, the rose. I'm like, whiskey? Get to get a brick. Whiskey. Get a brick, we'll be fine. Okay, so like. Nah. You got to get the brick. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite sports thing? I know you're from, you know, Kansas, so Chiefs all the The Chiefs team. definitely did okay. their thing this year. I don't care. Everybody trying to go in on us because it's been 50 years, but your mama 50 years old, so I she finally got a chance did. to see what's good. Oh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny because, I mean, obviously, I don't really be in a sports like that. Yeah. And I'm so happy I got a girl who really in a sports because when she hype, I'm hype. That's and, all that matters. And honestly, I, it's to the point where now I'm a little more into it. Like, I like, I like, I like sports. Don't get me wrong. Like I know what's going on. I ain't mm -hmm. gonna be like, oh, he just uh, scored a, a home run and it's football. Like, I'm not gonna do nothing stupid like that. Like I know what's going on. But I think for me, I just really like the ending of the stuff. All that sitting, waiting, and trying to figure out and hard thriving. I don't, I don't like. Well, all if that. it makes you feel better, I don't know what's going on in golf. But that's neither here nor there. So if you had a, <laughs> if you had a superpower, what would it be? Uh. I just wanted to be look. This was my ultimate thing. I wanted to be the guy on skates. Like, I don't know why I wanted. I wanted to be the superhero as a kid that had skates and could like super fast, like teleport. I just wanted like teleportation. You know, I definitely wanted my first episode. I said I wanted to teleport so I could pop up on a bitch. Oh, okay. Ooh, we right there. Right there. You know what you trying that, to bro? Do? Cause I hate driving. I just hate. Yeah. Driving. But then I thought when been in Atlanta, I'm like, if I could just real quick anywhere. But look, listen. What if like you? What if you was like in your bed naked, snug, and, we like, <laughs> and like it just took you, and you was in front of a crowd? See, uh, hey, nightcrawler, I have to go somewhere else. Oh, you hurry up and real quick. Real quick, I'm trying to tell you. But it depends what type of. It depends what mode I'm in. Because it... <laughs> <laughs> tune in, comment, subscribe. All right. Uh, if you were stuck on an island and you could bring three, 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 three things, things. what would it be? Uno cards. <laughs> I love Uno. I got so mad at Eric because she be cheating. I just threw the cards. <laughs> do y'all do stacks? Oh, yeah. That's okay. the reason why I like it. Okay. Like, if y'all don't play stacks, then why are we playing? I like Uno cards. Um, uh, a barber? Can I have a barber? You can, but does I, you got to worry about that. Oh, Is it okay. wireless? You know? Yeah, wireless. I guess not. Um, he has to charge us. So let me just be realistic. Like, Uno cards, Aaron. Yeah, I can have a person. Yeah, I thought I, was, I, I always gonna... bring somebody with me. I'm not just gonna be on the island by myself. Oh yeah, I'm not rubbing shit out with. Yeah, Come oh, on yeah. now. Oh, I'll probably have sex with a coconut if that. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> you you know, gotta I'm do what you gotta no, do. You. Uh, Uno cars, Aaron, and some wine. It's like you never gonna get off the island. You didn't say all that. What three things you would bring? I would bring a boat. You, that's not how you play it. You gotta have three things that you would like. I mean, I because thought, you're stuck on the island. Nigga, if I could get off the island, I would bring yeah, a helicopter. Yeah, like, well, I, I can tell that you watch a lot of these type of interviews because you actually, that's what most people say, like they bring an album, so to say. Yeah, I, but that, when I've been working with my old other co hosts, it's like, how do you get off? So now I gotta think technically, like, okay. Oh. If, if, if he said he would fly a plane, but if you fly a plane, do you know how to fly it? Cause then you'll be right to the water. Yeah. See. So for me. So that's why I would always bring somebody with me, cause you never know how long you might be stuck in the water. Okay. Now that's good. And I don't mind procreating. I feel like I'll be one of the people, cause I watched uh, Castaway. Okay. I, I feel like I can make a little raft, a raft or something, like chop down some wood, mm -hmm. get some bamboo strips, like kind of tie that thing. Zoom, that's zoom, right. Tie, tie, tie. It might not withstand the current, but I mean, at least I feel like it'll, it'll, it'll be a cool try. I feel like the dude on Titanic. 
Weekends or weekdays? Weekends. All right. All right. All of my weekdays been cracking, though. I'll be traveling a lot. So. Man. Yeah, you have. Uh -huh. But being here, weekdays crack. Weekdays be Weekdays crack, crack, crack regardless. We so, I know we asked this question earlier, but if you could work with anybody dead or dead or alive with no language barriers, so that, you know, you can like talk. Like I can speak? Yeah. Or they can speak. My wife, Aaliyah. That's just funny. my wife. That's my, that's my first wife. She died when I was at church. They came and told everybody. It was like, yeah, Leah died. Leah died. I think I cried, bro, because I'm just like, dang, like, she was definitely going to be in, like, she was going to be right there with him. I mean, but Leah ain't got much on him. Air. Yeah. That's a guy's. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, how, would you like to be, how would you like to be remembered? Uh... It's so crazy because as you uh, as you talk <laughs> as you talk about uh, how you want to be remembered, I just easily think about Kobe and his legacy, mm -hmm. and I feel like that is the perfect example of how to be remembered. I feel like while people are trying so hard to pull up allegations and make it seem like he was something that he was, or whatever case may be, yeah. I just feel like the thick of his legacy is still is still carry weight. Um, you talk about Nipsey Hussle, like that's somebody who carries a legacy, yeah. you know, and it I feel like. Different. I feel like um, Michael Jackson carries a legacy. Mm -hmm. Tupac, these names they carry some sort of legacy, regardless if they had certain situations that made them imperfect or not. It's like you know that name, your kids know the name. And so for me, I just think for me, I just want to be remembered as somebody who cared. Like yeah. I, I really have a big heart. Like I, and I think that's my downfall too because I'm friends with anybody until they like cross me. And mm -hmm. I realize my girlfriend had to tell me like everybody not your friend. Like. And I had to realize that because it'd be, it'd be people talking down on you or following you just so they could see you fail. And it's like, and they have no, they don't care about hiding it no more. And it's like, they'll let you know. And it's just like, why why do you care to even tap in? Yeah, that's one thing, it, the thing, the question back when I said, what one thing you wish you didn't need? That. Mm -hmm. Because you'd be like, you, I wish I would have listened sometimes. Be like, oh, these people really ain't your friends because when you needed them, where were they at? And it ain't even about needing them because like, for me, for it's, support. The, I think what got me is that I was homeless in my own city at one point in time. Wow. And so the need, I'm not saying I'm perfect because I know how to finesse a lot. So I can, I can manipulate situations. Lose. I know how to Something finesse nice. my way into different things. But I had to realize like that's not what life is about. Life ain't trying to finesse somebody that you truly care about. That's right. And so for me, I just had to be humble. And I feel like that's why this journey, can't nobody tell me about what it is. A lot of people try to tell me, oh, why are you an assistant? It's like, you know, you, and I know they mean well. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got so much talent. You should be this. You should be that. And it's like, yeah, this is my journey, not yours. Right. And you watching from a distance. So therefore, just keep watching and wait to see it unfold type thing. That's so. fact. So our last segment is when you posted this, what did you mean? Okay. All right. Okay. I didn't know you were kind of ready for that. All right. So when you posted this, we talked earlier, you know, when you were able, you want to talk to kids, want to yep. be able to talk to communities. When you posted this and it's going to pop up on the screen, yep. what did you? What did it mean to you? I love this photo because it really represents um, a bigger mission. Mm -hmm. Like for me, having my 816 shirt on in Africa just means that I am, I'm fulfilling my mission as this boy from Kansas City who wanted to get out. And it's that, that photo right there, I was so intentional on making sure that it happened because for me, it's a reminder that that there's still a a rice of passions that yeah. we gotta that we gotta keep Go that on. we gotta maintain, yeah. and so that just it, it hypes me up because I know that I'm going back. Yeah. I know that I'm going to be back. I know that I'm a I'm a change lives, and and that photo just represents that a boy from Kansas City can't do it. So I love that photo. I'm going back with you. I'm gonna be a videographer. Mm -hmm. All right, and so this last photo, you know, what did it mean when you posted this? Man, I was okay. So, can I be real? When I seen it, I kind of you feel really? me? It because I understand what it when you are an entrepreneur, you Ooh. know what things take to get to certain places, Man. and sometimes you need to be re um, re engaged into a certain yeah. situation so you can get a clear understanding. Because you with new heights, there's new levels with new understanding. Yeah. So when you get all that, this needs to happen sometimes. It's true. So when you when you when you posted it and when it happened, what did it mean to you? I appreciate you just being man enough to say that it made you almost tear up, bro. Like that, yeah. I'm about to tear up just because 
that picture means the world to me. I, I don't always get it right. I'm not always perfect. I fall short, but for the most part, that picture just reminds me that I'm still his, that yeah. I'm still God's child. And it's like he never left me. Even when I want to leave myself sometime and we all had them thoughts where we just like, why, 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 why? Mm -hmm. It's like that photo just shows me like I was celebrating that moment. I was on fire again. And it's like I have to remind myself that my fire doesn't, it's, it's not going to burn out if I don't let it. You know what I mean? Down.